Hey guys, so um, I'm gonna break down the pattern for the song High now, okay? So check it out. And then I'll give you a tour of the kit. For the song High, I'm using a kit with three snare drums. So the main snare, of course, you know. Then I'm using a 10 inch snare right here, which is a jazz series. And then I'm using a 14 inch, 14 by 14 snom. This set also has a rattle tom here and a gong drum here. Rattle tom, gong drum. I'm using a cowbell with my left foot in the song. Closed hi hat here. I'm using this stack in this pattern and everything else, like the whole kit. I'll start with the basic pattern of the song. The hand pattern goes like this. Three. So you can tell there's already a lot going on. There's a lot of reading material in this beat. Backbeat on the main snare on two and four. But the backbeat is played, the first one is played with the right hand, the two. The four is played with the left hand, four. This is a four bar phrase. In the, in the first bar, this is the pattern. Second bar. Those, uh, the E's and R's on the floor tom, which is the snom. Then the third bar goes like this. With the stack on the last two sixteen notes, again, four. And the fourth bar is again the E and R on the snom, with the rattle tom and gong drum. Two, three, four. So the same as the second bar. The whole four bar phrase is this. Two, three, four. That's the hand phrase and the kick drum. Now the kick drum is playing on one and three. On the one, I'm just playing the kick drum. On three, in certain parts of the song, I'm bridging the pedal to play the kick drum and the bell like this three four okay the reason why I'm doing this on the three is that Sometimes I play like a simple bell on the one, like this, three, four. And I want both to ring in different positions in the bar. So a bell on the one and this bell on the three, for example. So the reason why I'm doing it on the three is basically so I can play a crash on the one or a bell on the one and that'll ring and not get in the way of the bell that I'm playing together with the kick drum. So I move that effect to the three. So it's always there unobstructed or covered by any other symbols. The interesting part of this groove is the whole time throughout the whole song, I'm playing and ah uh, with my left foot on the cowbells throughout the whole song. So the left foot pattern is this, two, three, four.
Now, there's another uh, little tricky thing in the song, and that's a linear single roll between left hand and right foot. So 30 second notes, the left hand plays the 16 notes, the right foot fills in between the left hand. Three, four. Okay, that's tricky because the left foot keeps going. And I'll play that part of the song. So that's slightly tricky because there's a lot of information in this, the single stroke roll between hand and foot, and then the E and uh, the and R on the left foot. And then of course the whole orchestration is on top of that. And then there's another section of the song where I'm playing in the bridge Continuing with the cavil on the left foot, but the rest of the pattern changes and it's more of a conventional drum set pattern. The right hand is playing So uh, there's a coordination issue going on there. Hope you like that breakdown. Enjoy practicing these patterns. Bye. And another question. Yes. How many toes do you need in order to do this? It doesn't matter how many. Um, in my case, uh, what's very helpful is that all my toes are big toes. So uh, in order for you to play this way, you need to have a specific type of coffee and uh, there is a specific coffee that I know that you like to drink in order for these things to execute. You know it, Kaz. But don't spill my secret here. Don't tell the people. <sighs> That's good. It's going to cost. It's going to cost a lot of money to don't, do that. Don't share it. <laughs> it's a little fancier than what you're drinking because you're drinking just simply... You know, you're drinking tea, aren't you, Kaz? Yeah, English breakfast tea London for me. London Fog. London Fog Earl Grey tea. <laughs> exactly. that's, that's what works for me. Yeah, well, you can only play this pattern if you if you drink your daily uh, quantum of uh, skinny vanilla lattes. Easy on the froth. Easy, easy, extra easy on the froth. Extra easy on the froth. What gave you the idea of this orchestration with this kit? I wanted to recreate really strange drum parts from the 80s. In the 80s, it was very common practice to you know, program like a kick in the snare and then like a hi-hat pattern over that and you have something like that, very basic. And then you know, some programmer or drummer or producer would come along and go, hmm, it sounds a little empty, let's add whatever. On top of that. And then let's add you know every four bars and then let's add you know a little bass drum roll but everything else keeps going on you know so these layers of rhythms became quite complex and I wanted to kind of reverse engineer some of that kind of 80s commercial programming because if you look at it under the microscope it's super complex although it sounds pretty commercial when you first hear it it sounds like yeah there's a drum pattern there's some kind of percussion stuff and maybe a clap and a whatever whip in the cabasa but if you actually try to play all these things at the same time, it's challenging, but it's fun to play because when you play this precisely and all the things fall in place, then it, it has a very unusual feel to it, you know, when you're actually playing it. And I think it sounds cool too. So that's when I started adding like flavors to the, you know, on the three I'll play with the bell and the kick drum. You know, that's just a little flavor, but it's there, and you hear it in the groove, you know? You know? It's there, and it's subtle, but it's interesting and fun. Or that's that stack on the last two 60 notes. Three, four. That was the whole 
point and concept of the whole album, basically. Try to reverse engineer and play complex layers of programming, you know, on the drum set. Yeah, essentially, you're just not needing a drum machine because yeah, you exactly. are exactly. orchestrating the drum. <laughs> What's the difference between a drum machine and a drummer? <laughs> Don't know. With the drum machine, you only have to punch in the information once. Well, I, I think that deserves a, a little badoomch. Bravo! <laughs> okay.